there is a fine line somewhere between hoarding and collecting. And well, with this car, I'm hoping to become a curator because behind me is the 2006 Volkswagen RGTI concept. You may have forgotten about it. You may never know it existed, but we're gonna take a full look at what makes this carbon fiber and aluminum bodied car so special in Volkswagen history. Today's video, as always, is brought to you by our good friends at thesuspensionsource.com, purveyors of fine suspension coilovers and other setups, and the home of SolarWorks. Thank you to them for making this possible. Check them out online, suspensionsource.com. This car was unveiled for the 2006 SEMA show in Las Vegas, but about a month before that, European car magazine, rest in peace, got a full look at the car before it was publicly unveiled. So back in 2005, Volkswagen had multiple special cars at SEMA and they were dubbed the RGTs. But we're gonna need a whole part two episode to go into all of the history and the backstories in full. But briefly, those cars involve HPA in Canada and a bunch of other companies to put together. Whereas this one, well, this one in 2006, Volkswagen had their new Volkswagen Design Center in Oxnard, California. And it was dubbed a rather long name, the Engineering Center, wait, 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 hang on. <clears throat> the Volkswagen Innovation and Engineering Center of California, the correct name. It's the Oxnard or the Volkswagen California Design Center, whatever you want to call it. But it was brand spanking new and they wanted to show off. So they brought this inside they're a core group of designers, including a gentleman called Derek Jenkins, who at the time was Volkswagen America's chief designer, Abeng Halim, who did the exterior. And I'm gonna try and get your, uh, the pronunciation right, try not to butcher this. Um, Yuval Applebaum, who did the interior and the special mirrors. We'll talk about that in a minute. And Nancy Holman, who handled the color, the materials, and the graphics. Which, this is not how the car came out. This has been what I thought painted flat black, but actually is a flat black wrap over some of the original paint. Which again, we'll talk about in a minute. Now, 15 years later, this is how the car sits here, while that person, the head of design, Derek Jenkins, is now the president of design and head of brand at Lucid, which is wild because Lucid just had a valuation of a bazillion dollars. Um, so from this pet project of that team to the head of brand and design at Lucid is absolutely wonderful, crazy, and pretty amazing for the backstory of this. While Yuval is the senior design manager of Volkswagen of America. So definitely some crazy influential and pretty special people involved in this exact car, hands-on, doing the interviews with European car and everything else. So let's jump into exactly what's special on this car. So up front, well, this huge bumper, this absolutely one-off huge bumper, it has notes of the Thunder Bunny kit, which did actually go into production. It was the front bumper for the TDI Cup cars but this is a full one-off. Derek Jenkins, head of design, stated that he wanted to keep the front intercooler central instead of going off to the side. So it has this huge, huge central vent. And then, well, collected a lot of dirt in the parking lot where it's been stored for many years, but it has these great big vents there. And this rather unusual exter like extra piece of material going out from the badge, which is definitely unique definitely different but that is well oe it is what the volkswagen designers wanted to put on it blacked out headlights that's kind of common in the, the tuning world carbon fiber hood carbon fiber fenders these were made by oser 
designs from Japan, and to this day, OSER still have them available, similar ones at least, on their website in the USA. So some of these products have gone on and continued on. To quote Derek, it's all vacuum bagged carbon with satin finish. So under here, it's a mix of gloss with the hexagon designs running throughout it. But yes, at some point it was wrapped black. So I can't show you that. What we can show you right now, and it's very hard to pick out, is these wider fenders. They are 22 millimeters wider than factory, but you really wouldn't notice, but that's to make the 265 profile tires fit. Now, this is gonna be attention to detail. See how far out this wheel sticks right now? It's out maybe 10 millimeters or so. If we run around to the other side, it's a little bit weird. It doesn't stick out. <laughs> it's in. Is the alignment bad? Has the subframe shifted? Has something been bent? I have no idea. So we'll get this up on a lift and, and find out what happened there properly. Hopefully nothing is too badly damaged or bent because a lot of the things are custom. So let's take a look at the wheels and the brake setups. It does get a little bit wilder. So there was a group effort within the Volkswagen design team on the wheels and the brakes. Abeng Halim was in charge of the wheel design and quoted in the press as saying that he was inspired by his Ducati influences, of course Ducati being part of the Volkswagen group. But these are one-off custom wheels where they brought the hexagon design in with the five spoke. And actually, I think these would look right at home on a Mark 7 or even a Mark 8 today, 15, 16 years later. One thing that has not aged so well, perhaps, is the brake calipers. And they are Brembo's from their GT lineup, four piston, 13 inch rotors, but they have been painted with the German flag. Um, the head designer, Derek, stated in the media that he was in Germany in 2005, six, and that was during the World Cup, and he got all excited about the football and all the football fans there, and decided to, uh, to bring some of that fun into the design. And I don't think it's dated very well. I think it's very mid-2000s. Um, now, yeah, it would be gloss black or red or something, but hey, I mean, that's, that's fine. Some things that have dated very, very well are the back bumper, which is one of my favorite things. So let's jump to that right now. Quick sidebar, it is really cold in here. We have a heating inspection on Thursday, but until then, um, that's why I'm wearing two hoodies showing off my VW design hoodie. But yeah, it's freezing. Um, other non-ideal things, this side skirt custom made is kind of falling off. So we're gonna have to fix that as, as well, but um, it's, it's still there, so we're, we're fine. Um, one of my favorite things on the car is the rear bumper. This looks like a factory bumper, which is made of plastic, but it's not. It's full aluminum. Somehow they have sculpted, bent, stretched, formed this whole bumper out of aluminum, which is a wild, wild feat of engineering underneath the lower lip. Yeah, okay, I can see that being aluminum, but the whole thing is it's absolutely wild, a complete one-off. And I think it actually throws back a little bit to the W12 GTI, one of the wildest concepts ever made. I mean, absolutely wild, but I think this makes it a cousin of that car. Going around to the hexagon designs carrying on, this rear tip for the exhaust as well is amazing. And I think it really flows. And for as understated almost as the front looks with the, the wider fenders, etc., I think the rear looks bang up to date. I, I think this is amazing. Do have the R GTI badging there and an APR badge. Why? Well, because APR were absolutely part of the go in this project. So 400 horsepower, upgraded everything. <laughs> Upgraded exhaust, upgraded integral, upgraded injector, ECU tuning, 400 horsepower, hence those 265 width tires all around. Sticking with carbon fiber, carbon fiber rear upper spoiler, and hatch. Carbon, aluminum, lightweight throughout wherever the designers and engineers could work out how to do it. Basically, I think the chassis 
the main shell is the only thing that's steel at this point. Everything else is carbon or aluminum. You'll notice the car is lowered as well. It does have H&R coilovers and also upgraded sway bars from H&R. Now, I said the back bumper might be one of the wildest and at least under appreciated parts on this car, so too might the interior be, especially the rear seat, because this is the two plus two layout with full, full harness bars with a custom built harness bar across the back that flips up and tell you what, I'll meet you inside. I'm just gonna show you this in person. So inside, yes, we have the Recaro seats, which you think, okay, they're kind of normal. They do have custom cushions, etc. But to nerd out entirely, look at these custom brackets with a one-off set of pull handles that allow everything to flip up with these special latch-in side brackets, which are super cool. We've also got the RGTI logos there and carbon fiber throughout. There is a Alcantara steering wheel, a custom shift knob, it goes on and on. But that back seat, good grief. It is kind of hard to get into, but they thought of that. So you fold the seat forwards and then the harnesses, the Schroth harnesses go through here. And if I reach through and flip this lever, the entire harness bar lifts up and flips up to the ceiling. And then maybe gracefully, maybe not, I can kind of go between the seat ugh, under the harness bar and slide into the molded carbon seat back here. I don't know if you can even see me anymore between all of this. So come around to the other side and let's take a look at this absolute sheer insanity of design. So there is a lot going on back here. Let's start with this harness bar. It pivots on the original seatbelt location and all of this has been custom made for it. It's also wrapped and stitched and everything. And now that I'm in the back seat, I can pull this down into a custom made center console piece that flips up and locks in place. All right, so now, now I have some old beep bars for going on the track, I guess. But let's move on to the next thing while we, well, acknowledge the sagging headliner because yeah, Mark V life at this point. Um, but carbon fiber seats molded one piece into a whole assembly. So there's two bucket seats to match the Recaros, but it's literally molded with one entire piece, but with red material going around the outside and the same seat pads as the fronts. And overall, it's actually super, super comfortable. And it has the same Sroth seat belts coming back from the back with another bar in the trunk that mimics this one. This is insane that this car has it. And in fact, you may have noticed on the outside, the windows are tinted. Why would you hide this amazingness? So on my to-do list, yes, headliner, but also let's take the window tint off so that people can actually see just how amazing this car is on the inside and how much effort they put into all of this because it is madness. Seriously, this, this, this whole thing is all wrapped and stitched. It's, it, I, it's mind blowing that they did all of this in the back seat of a Mark V. Amazing. Under the hood, everything looks pretty original. Obviously we've got the big old school APR intake going down to the cold air scoop down there. There are bigger injectors, but manifold, valve cover, everything else remains stock. You can see the carbon fiber raw underneath there. And I didn't know when I first saw the car, but it is not painted flat black. You can see the matte wrap underneath there. So at some point I'm going to uh, get the wrap heated up and we'll see just what everything looks like underneath there. But visually it's an FSI engine, two liter turbo, six speed manual, yeah, it's exactly what we're used to now. This evolved into the TSI. This has evolved into the 240 horsepower plus, 310 horsepower plus now in the TSIs going into the Mark 8. But essentially this is where the 16 valve engine came from and has gone on through there. So everything still shuts, everything still works. Fit and finish is great. Just got those repairs, but overall it's not too bad. 
So where do we go from here? Well, do we restore the original paint? That would be awesome. Um, some of the modern technology in 2022 means that we may be able to uh, do some things within a normal enthusiast reach. So perhaps those beautiful mirrors that are now missing, we could just 3D print a new set. Some other things are wildly out of my reach realistically. That back bumper is a work of art. Um, it's in good condition though, but this front bumper, it's gonna need some work. So we'll have to dive into that. Mechanically, I think we're in pretty good shape. SCP Euro, one of my partners, will be no problem for the timing belt. We'll get some Licamoli oil, we'll get a Hengst oil filter, some spark plugs, just bring it up to speed there. And Michelin still make a tire in this size, so that's no problem there. My other big dreams, well, maybe we could have a part two. Uh, find some of the original designers, engineers, partners, and find out if they even remember it and where it fits into their career paths. So in fact, if you know one of those people or if you are one of those people watching this, hit me up, please. It would be amazing to find out some more history on this and where it fits into their lives. Um, the car could easily have been crushed. It could easily have been recycled for being out of date or not needed for marketing. And that's why this car was made for marketing. But thanks to enthusiasts within the Volkswagen group, both of the car and of the brand's history, it's still here and it's just in need of some love. So as the, well, caretaker of this car, it would be really nice to see that it gets the work and the love that it needs right now and then it can come out to play again. So I dream of it going to other events and enthusiast meetings across the United States so that you and other people get to see it. I mean, this car is now pushing 15, 16 years old, there are potentially GTI owners who were barely alive when this was created. I can't believe a Mark V is that old at this point. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Thank you Volkswagen for letting me look after this. Wash your hands, wash your cars, goodbye.